In this video, I will introduce you to the world of broadcast communication. We will explore broadcasting as a field of practice and study and look closely at some key areas of broadcasting and its features. We will also have a glimpse on how production works on those key areas. Are you ready? Lights, camera, action. So when we talk about broadcasting, it can be live or recorded. And it can also be in the form of radio, television, sound recording, motion picture or film, and social media and streaming. And from that, we will talk about some of these key areas, particularly radio, television, and film. So let's talk about the development of radio in the broadcasting industry. It started out as a point-to-point -point communication, similar to a telephone or telegraph back then. However, the notion of broadcasting of radio started in the 1920s where big businesses took control of the industry, thereby creating and mass-producing radio receivers and commercials and advertisements entered the scene of radio. It resulted in the boom of the radio industry where the networks were formed and policies were created to regulate radio. Now, Radio is moving slowly into the digital age. Satellite radio and internet radio are two digital services that will compete with traditional radio. So, what are the key features of radio? First is that radio is portable. It is easily transported and can be brought everywhere. That is why radio has more potential to reach people even in remote areas. Next is that radio is supplemental. You can listen to radio while you're working or studying or doing other things or even while you are resting. Third is that radio is universal. Almost every household has at least one radio. And last, radio is selective. Stations have their own niches and target audiences. For the listeners, radio can be personal as they can go to their preferred station to listen to their preferred or favorite format. So the radio industry composed of local station and networks, AM and FM stations, station formats, and also non-commercial radio. Let's talk about them one by one. First is that local stations and networks. So local radio stations operate in cities, provinces, or barangays, while networks are large stations that have wider reach, so it can cover the whole country or a particular region or provinces. Next is AM and FM stations. So what does AM and FM mean? AM stands for amplitude modulation, while FM stands for frequency modulation. AM stations cover longer range of distances, but broadcast is easily interrupted, while FM stations cover a shorter range of distance but not as easily interrupted. That is why news and educational programs are in AM stations, while FM stations are more of a music and other stations where you need to hear more quality sound. Next is station formats. Formats are types of consistent programming designed to appeal to a certain segment of the audience or a particular or target audience giving a station a distinct personality and having their own niche and target audience. So it can be a music format or ethnic format or a news or talk format. And finally, we have non-commercial radio. These are stations that do not air commercials due to its nature. So non-commercial radios are mostly owned by educational institutions or religious institutions or even private foundations. So. How is a radio program produced? Let us look first at the departments and staff. So the department structure of a radio station varies according to its size. So the departments include the program department, engineering department, news department, and sales department. Some of these may be merged depending on the employee size of the station. So if the station is small, some of these are composed of only 
one or two departments while if the station is big or it's a network station it can have more than four of these departments so let us look at how a radio show is produced in three different formats from music format to talk format to news format so let's go first with the music format in the music format the radio station staff uses a broadcast clock that divides a program into segments of different program elements. The program usually lasts an hour, so it is more of an hourly clock or a program wheel. This is used to avoid dead air and to aid the staff in scheduling for the program. So sometimes the DJ schedules the song or puts the song in the clock, and in that way, the song is automatically played. Producing a talk show requires more equipment than producing a simple DJ program. So it involves equipment such as speaker telephones and extra telephone lines, as well as a delay system and a telephone screener so that station managers would have time to cancel out and filter out some of the things that people say in the telephone or even to filter out who is calling. And finally, we have the news format. In the news format, a broadcast clock is also used. But instead of music, the program is divided into different news segments. In the news format, a news anchor is needed as well as editors, local reporters, or stringers or freelance reporters. There's also a need for more equipment and facilities, especially if news programs are done live. Now let's go to television. So television became popular after the Second World War and replaced radio as the main medium of information and entertainment. By the 1960s, the television industry matured thereby having more professional content. Let us look at some key features of television. First is that television is universal. Next is that television is the dominant medium for news and also entertainment. Just like what I said earlier, it replaced radio as the main medium for news and entertainment during that time. And also, television is an expensive business. We spend so much money to buy equipment and even to produce a TV show. And finally, its audience is currently fragmenting into smaller segments. Just like radio where there is a niche or target audiences, television is also shifting towards that phase. So how is television industry organized? The commercial television system consists of all local stations whose income is derived from selling time on their facilities to advertisers. Non-commercial television consists of stations whose income is derived from sources other than the sale of advertising time. So much like the film industry, the TV industry is divided into three segments, production, distribution, and exhibition. The production element is responsible for providing the programming that is ultimately viewed by the TV audience. The distribution function is handled by the TV networks, cable, and syndication companies. And the exhibition of television programs, which is the element in the system that most people are most familiar with, is the responsibility of local TV stations. So how are TV programs produced? Let us first look at the departments and staff. In one common arrangement, a station manager is ultimately responsible for all station activities. The rest of the station is organized into these departments, sales department, engineering department, production or programming department, news and administrative department. The divisions are somewhat more complicated at the network level. Networks usually have these departments, sales, entertainment, operated stations, affiliate relations, news, sports, standards, and operations. So how do we get TV programs on air? Let's first look at the news. So the biggest effort at a TV station goes into the newscast at the local level. Almost every station has a studio that contains a set for one or two anchor people and reporters. The station's news director assigns stories to reporters and camera crews will travel to the scene of the story and videotape a report. Back at the station, the newscast producer and news director are planning what stories to air and allotting time to each, while reporters and editors write a copy and prepare segments for their program. 
at the end, the director is responsible for pulling everything together and putting the newscast on the air. In entertainment, network executives receive hundreds of story pitches every year. From these pitches or ideas, network executives submit these stories to producers for further attention. After the producers examine the stories and trim the list, the networks will request a sample script and a list of possible stories that could be turned into scripts. If the idea looks promising, the network and producer enter into a contract for a pilot, which is the first episode of a series. If the pilot show gains a respectable audience, the show may continue and may place the program on its schedule. From the hundreds of ideas that are sent to the network, only a few ever make it to prime time. This usually applies in the context of Western societies or American societies. But in the Filipino context, sometimes pilots are already being played and it doesn't require respectable audience if it needs to be continued on air. So we now go to film or motion picture. Movies are an expensive medium. To produce a movie, it needs to have much money for casting, production, and even the distribution of films. So much like the TV industry, the organization of the film industry involves the production, the distribution, and the exhibition of films. How are films produced? It involves three stages or phases called pre-production, production, and post-production. So in the pre-production phase, the script is being written and the directors, producers, and other staff talk about how they will produce the movie. The directors and the actors are heavily involved during the production phase. And the post-production phase involves the distribution of the film, the promotion of the film, and even the marketing and checking the sales of the film. Broadcast communication offers a wide range of possibilities and opportunities for communication majors. We can focus on radio, television, film, or even in the recording industry. Aside from this media, broadcasting industries are also linked with advertising and public relations. In short, the broadcasting industry is a very complex industry. There is also a need to regulate the mass media industry as well as to provide ethical guidelines so we may continue to provide quality content as well as set professional standards to this expanding industry.